everybody, us. and welcome to Dogs on the Run. Uh, another week. He's Pierre Woods. I'm Andy Baskin. Those monitors are on the wrong screen. If we get a chance to switch that, that'd be great. All right. Anyways, um, you know, there are no rules on this show, so we say things like those monitors are flipped yeah, over. Yeah, you can say uh, anything you want. The great Randy is here today. Okay. Eric, yeah. the referee, is off. Hi, great Randy. Are you? A little tired. We're good. No, no zebra stripes. No zebra stripes. Yeah. Why are you wearing Browns apparel this morning? You know, this is kind of just you know what was hanging around when I woke up. To be quite honest, so it's it's, it's what it you got. He's still here for the Browns. Impressive, impressive. Thank you. All right, so we know what's going on over here. If we yeah. need to look and see what's actually on the show, um, are we periscoping today as well? Are we live on Periscope now? We will be live on Periscope. So, and what what's the Periscope follow today? Uh, the lose five. Lose five. Do you want us to restart for Periscope no, to let people know what's going on? All right, so we don't even have to restart. Um, also, uh, as you know, our good friend Kenny Rhoda joins us every uh, Monday morning here on Skype, too. So we'll go to Kenny as well. Good morning, yeah. Kenny. How are you? Good morning. Uh, it's deja vu all over again. Well, I got to tell you, Kenny, let, let's just do a little roundtable here first. And I, I don't even want to start with the game. I want to start with the fact that how do rumors about trades get started before these guys even take the field? And how much does that affect them during the game? Can't let Kenny go first, and, then, and we'll come back to you, Perry. Go. Uh, it's the chaos that is the Cleveland Browns. Uh, year after year, we see stuff like this happening from a general manager getting suspended for texting down to the sidelines to starting rumors before a big home game against the Arizona Cardinals. You wonder how that gets out, the stuff that got out the TMZ. Uh, this organization is a complete mess. It has been. It starts at the top with Jimmy Haslam. Uh, a lot of people felt that once he took over this team, this organization, franchise would go in a di different direction. It has not. He's been a distraction, and everything associated with him and the team uh, has been a distraction. They're 2-6, and six, uh, I believe 2-11 and 11 if you count the five losses in a row going back to last year in their last 13 games. So uh, it is what it is. They are the Cleveland Browns. You are what your record says you are and what your organization says it is from things that happen on and off the field. All right, go ahead. You got it. Well, I think eternally inside, in-house, these guys need to keep quiet, especially the front office. If a guy's going to get traded, he's going to get traded regardless of anything. They're going to have to move all of his stuff <laughs> to wherever he's going. But to talk about trade rumors before a game, an important game, a game that they could have won, they were up 20-7, to 7, you just have a big distraction. I mean, guys don't want to play for a team that they feel like, oh, well, I'm here one minute, the next minute I'm gone. I mean, I watched Alex Mack let Josh McCown get knocked around all day yesterday. And, I mean, literally, like, he walked right past him and even pat him on the butt or in the back and say, I'm going to help you up or anything. Right. I mean, this guy, like, he don't want to be here no more. Alex doesn't want to be here. I don't think he wants to be here anymore. Well, I think those rumors don't help anything in the morning. Um, I'm going to take George real quick here, and then I'll, I'll address this. Hey, George, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. How are you guys? Good, George. And, and for anyone that's just joining us for the first time on Dogs on the Run, George exemplifies what Do Dogs on the Run is all about. It is 100% free speech on anything you want to say, so you can say whatever you want. There are no rules on Dogs on the Run, so uh, if you want to Skype in the way George is, it's Dogs on the Run. We also want to welcome everybody who's watching on Periscope today. You don't get all yeah. the neat visual effects that everyone else does on Newsnet 5, but we're glad you're with us. George, go ahead. Uh, I'm still trying to decipher what fictitious trade rumors are, according to our great coach. I enjoyed the uh, ecstasy and agony yesterday, squeezing my friend here, Snowy, which <laughs> was real fun, and throwing my uh, hey, Cam. squeeze football, which was real fun. Uh, I don't know what the fuck is going on anymore. It's just driving me crazy. And uh, at least I'm not a referee in the ACC and uh, getting suspended for two games. You know how that is. Uh, t I feel more sorry for our pathetic defense, but worse for New Orleans and the Giants. They were playing Big 12 shootout yesterday. Whoever uh, made an actual defensive play won. Now, my question to you this morning is, why in the flying fucking hell did they leave Josh in that game when you knew his ribs were killing him? I thought the league's uh, new uh, agenda was to protect the players. And, well, if it isn't to protect the players, tell us what the hell's going on. Please, somebody in New York, 
come up with an intelligent answer, not a public relations bullshit line. All right, George, is that it? Uh, besides that, uh, two questions. Sure. Are we going to be on the air Friday because no. we play Thursday night? Nope. We'll be back Monday morning. Monday morning. Okay, Monday morning, gentlemen. Have yeah. a great one. All right, we'll talk to you soon. George, uh, all right, no all problem. out there, uh, not holding anything back. He never holds anything back. No, he doesn't. All right, so let's, uh, let, me, let me touch on the first subject just because I'm kind of all over the place here. First of all, these trade rumors, my, my question isn't so much about the rumors because they happen. They happen in all sports. Why do they happen on a Sunday morning before a game? How does that happen? And it's not like Ian Rappaport. Ian Rappaport can go 24-7. So as soon as he gets that stuff, he's normally going to go with it. Right. So I assume that he went with that yesterday. Adam Schefter, same thing. I don't think these guys were holding it back for Sunday morning. I think once they got the information, they got it. So the next question is, where does that come from? And you would probably know, as, I would hope you know as well as anybody else. Does that come from within the Browns organization? Does that come from their agents? Does that come from somebody who's got an ax to grind with the organization? Or does that come from other GMs that just want to make the – Someone that they may have been talking to or floating rumors out that just want to make the Browns look bad. That's in-house all day. 100% in-house. 100%, 100%. Do you do that to motivate your team? Because if you look at what you saw that's, in the first half, I thought they were motivated. That's not motivation. What if is it? anything, that's downgrading. That's, that's digressing. You're not having no progress. I mean, yeah, they played well in the first <laughs> half. That's just the first half. It's a two-half series. If you don't play well in both halves, then you're going to get your ass But did the rumors before the game affect them in the beginning? Were they pissed? Um, I can't say that. I mean, because you would you they, be? They, I would be. Would you be as a team or as an? Let's say your name wasn't the. But name. it be, but it became a me game instead of a we game. Fair enough. So, Kenny, hop in on this. Yeah, the, you wonder about the 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 temperament of Joe Thomas. If anything ever bothers him, he just seems like no matter what is said, what happens, he plays the same way. Now this year he's been dog crap. Uh, Alex Mack's been horrible as well. Double sure. dog, dog crap, if you want to uh, throw that in there. I don't know if he's still hurt. He's not 100%. He just doesn't want to be here. So you, with Joe Thomas, I don't know if that really affected him. I, I just think offensive line has been terrible. 39 yards rushing and your leading rusher uh, is your quarterback and Josh McCown. He's scrambling for his life. Uh, this has been a horrible offensive line from day one. So I don't necessarily think it had an effect on, on Mack and, and Thomas. They've been terrible all year. Where do you think the rumors came from? That's my question. It, it, that, that, I tend to agree with Pierre. I think it probably came from in-house, getting it out there, throwing it out there. And, you know, why, I'm not sure. Maybe they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, get a feel for who might be interested with the trading deadline coming up in a few days. So right. uh, I, I've got it. If I had to guess, I would say from in-house, somehow, some way. And it was coming up a little bit last week. Right. I mean, it was, it was quiet, but... It just came out this, this this Sunday early in the morning. Like, okay, Ian Rappaport. One thing I know about that guy when he was in New England, right? <laughs> he doesn't care. He he he's going to do his job. He's a he's a media guy. He barks. He, he's going to let it out. As soon as somebody lets something roll out, he's going to make sure he catches it and he's going to put it out there. He's right. doing his job. Randy, who's on? And here's one other thing oh, on, on, on why I think it came from within. If I had to guess, I don't know this. I'm guessing, okay. but. You had a couple of weeks ago, you had Barkevius Mingo's agent bitching uh, about not being used, and, and he need, deserves more playing time. And we know Alex Mack's contract situation at the end of the year. So uh, there's two reasons right, right there that I think it came from inside, and, and the Browns sending the message out there that, hey, these guys are both available should anybody uh, want the pathetic Mingo or take on uh, Alex Mack, uh, you know, his contract and the contract negotiations that would happen in the offseason. I think with the Mingo thing, you can use him as safety right now. Move him to safety. His he best be days are behind him at LSU. He will Just be like upgrade. Johnny Manziel's best days are behind him at Texas A&M. <laughs> you know what, Kenny? I would agree with you. Yeah. And, but I just I need like a game, one more game to make sure that I'm 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I've never been a Manziel fan since they drafted him. I oh. wanted Carr or Bridgewater, so okay, uh, everybody too, knows that gonna... about me. So that it, it's been a joke since they drafted him. All right, I'm not going to hold that against you. I want to uh, clearly Mike Pettin wants nothing to do with Johnny Manziel on the field. That became more evident yesterday than the entire time that he's been here. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I just say we're hurting that safety right now. 
why not try to use him back there? Make, I, well, now next and on Thursday night, that would make sense. I mean, you got to use, use them. I mean, Josh. But what you're Josh saying is, makes Josh, sense. Josh, Josh is banged up. But you know how but, you know how rooms work in Berea. And if someone tells you you are a square peg, you will never, ever, ever be anything more than a square peg. True. True. That's how it works. All right, who's yeah. on Skype one? Two what, what and about? six, staring two and seven in the face on Thursday night. Uh, when people it, wake up uh, on Friday morning, Browns will be two and seven. Yeah, and then we'll be talking about can we get the first pick in the draft. Go, Go ahead. What do you got? Uh, <laughs> what do we got? Uh, line one, Max San, Melbourne, Australia, Browns back. Oh, Max. Good day, mate. Good day. How's it going over there? Good How day. are you? I'm good. I remember you guys from last year. You helped me increase my membership. Thanks for that. Outstanding. How many? What'd you end up getting? What'd you end up moving up? Uh, last year I was at six. So I'm up to about fourteen right now. All right. Well, let's get you up to twenty-eight if we can. That'd be great. Hey, let's do it. Let's double it every year. Tell everyone about the Melbourne Club. So located in Melbourne, Australia, um, there's currently two clubs located in Australia now. There's one in Perth, which is in the west coast of Australia. And we're here on the um, basically the southeast of Australia. All right. So when you guys get together, how do you get together and watch Browns games? Well, it, it's tough now to watch the Browns games. Um, now, actually, with the time change, it's at 5 a.m. in the morning. But previous to that, it was at 3 and then 4. So now we're at 5. Um, I think we're trying to get something together this week, though. Um, at lunchtime on Friday, we'll get together at a pub down here and try and watch the Bengals-Browns game. It's outstanding. And where what, do you know what pub that's going to be at? If anybody's hooking on with us, I'm hoping somewhere in St. Kilda. Um, so that's kind of the central region in the Melbourne area where um, the members are located around. So it should be a pretty central location so everyone can get there. So Max, did, were you able to watch the game yesterday? Oh, was I ever? You know, it was, it was a tale of two halves. Um, the first half was I, I was very happy with, and then the second half reminded me a lot of the Rams game. Um, something I would have liked to forget, but uh, it brought me back those haunting Halloween memories, I'll tell you that much. Um, I, was, I was very upset with the way they used Duke Johnson. Um, Duke Johnson had two touches for 68 yards in the first half. I think you'd try and feed the guy the ball and try and get him the ball as much as possible. They drafted this guy for a reason, and they're just not using him. He's definitely a mismatch. Yeah, I don't understand. Linebacker. Why do you think they didn't go back to Duke in the second half? I don't understand it. I, don't know. I, I was listening to a little of Patton after the game. Um, he got the one touch, and they said they're just rotating running backs. Yeah, but, they got a, I, I mean, I, this, this guy, when he touches the ball, he could break one off at any minute. He, he reminds me a lot of uh, – he's kind of like the Browns' Tavon Austin almost. But they, they really need to use him. Well, you know what? I think with, uh, with Duke Johnson – He's a mismatch against any linebacker. You put him on angle routes, you let him work outside pivot routes, things like that, like a slot receiver, but out the backfield. But you got to give Josh time to, you know, to get the ball out there. Josh is still alive this morning? I didn't realize Man, that. I'm telling you, that he's bad written right now, though. <laughs> That's true. Uh, he, That's he's, true. he's not going to practice today. I guarantee you that. Unbelievable. Uh, hey, Max. I was also listening to um, uh, Arian's uh, – halftime speech that he gave to the guys he brought up in his post game and, right. and he said that in the second half he was really aiming to shut down Duke because of all the damage he did in the first half but he didn't even need to worry about that yeah it was interesting to read the quotes from that that he walked in the locker room and said you're either contenders or pretenders let's go man and that was the end of it so uh Max we want to say goodbye to you thank you again uh, if you want to tweet at us and we'll retweet it back out if anybody wants to meet you in Melbourne uh, Andy underscore Baskin, tweet where you're going to be. I don't know if we can help you try to help out your group or not, but let me know, and uh, we appreciate your time. One more time, if they want to join your Browns backers group, what do they need to do? Uh, just go on the Browns uh, backers um, portal and join the Melbourne Browns backers, and I'm here. I accept everyone, and I'm waiting with uh, my arms wide open. All right, Max, thank you. We appreciate it. Good day.